Hey, so I've been wanting to make a budget cost account magic fund guide. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about this build, and I made a full POV with a full note section now to try to answer all your questions. If you do have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment below or come stop by my Twitch and I'll try to answer you immediately. Um, I'll be updating this POB um, with more and more you know, answers and questions if people have them, but yeah. So let's go over this build real quick. So budget cost to Garrow, I think in my opinion is the most cost effective magic fine build you can play currently. So what do I mean by that? So if you had like 50 divines, 100 divines, 200 divines, I would say like probably up to like 250, 300 divines. Um, there's no other magic fine build that beats this one in terms of performance uh, for price. So that's what I mean by it's the most cost effective magic fine build. Now, of course, you do need around 50 to 60 divines to get started. Uh, price is pretty variable. Um, I've noticed since I started making these videos, prices have already gone up a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, the build because the total build is a little bit more expensive, but yeah, price is variable. I say you need around 50 to 60 divines, and then you probably want like 15 divines for like map supplies. So yeah, if you do want a cheaper magic fine budget build, then Champion Corrupt and Fever is the cheapest around. But not everyone really likes that build, and it is pretty slow. But it is the cheapest. I would personally recommend to play this build and just do another Atlas strategy and save up for this build if you want to play magic fine. That's just my personal opinion. So yeah, we can go over the POB real quick now. And specifically in the notes so i do this note section i do click this i'll update it um you know if there's more questions or whatever so for the bow what hail you really want 240 percent plus there's no break point or anything it's just higher percent is more damage and is more life uh, for the quill and quiver um, if you want to know how to craft this you can watch my crafting guide i have it linked right here i'll link it down below in the description too a point of thing for the quiver, you really want double dot multi, max life, damage with both skills, and then craft. So you don't need movement speed or pierce or whatever yet. You just really want double multi, life, and damage with both skills. Just try to get these stats and then craft attack speed. This should cost around 20 divines or so. This is probably your most expensive piece. Well, it is your most expensive piece. And the helmet. A helmet's probably around 2 to 3 divines. You don't need the enchant. It just is nice if you do get it. You don't even need the rarity here. You just really want max life and mana reservation. And then for the implicits, you want mana reservation and reduce mana cost of attacks. For the Grease Embrace. So to color your Grease Embrace, you need to use Tainted Chromatic Orbs. And you need five green and one red or four green and two red. Uh, five green is more damage, about 10%. But... It's 1 in 120 for 5 green, 1 red, and it's 1 in 60 for either 5 green, 1 red, or 4 green, 2 red. So it is cheaper if you end up with 2 red. Just keep in mind, it is a pretty big damage loss. So do try to get 5 green when you can. And for the corruption, you need any of these 4 right here. So yeah, Proj, Duration, AoE, or Socket of Gems. Any of these corruptions work. They're all pretty much equal damage. Uh, plus one is usually the best though. Yeah, for your gold worms, your boots, um, just make sure you have the lab enchant. 80% chance of avoid being stunned. Combined with Heart of Oak, this gives you stun immunity for mapping, which is really, really huge because if you get stunned, that means you can't evade. And evade, evasion is pretty much all your defense. So yeah, being stun immune is very, very important. Uh, for Sedimas, just make sure you have Despair on hit, um, which is a lot of damage. These are pretty cheap. Um, I believe even still now, they're still really cheap, so yeah. Dragon, uh, Dragon Fang, you need at least a 12% mana reservation roll. So Dragon Fang right here, it rolls from anywhere from 10 to 15%. You need at least 12% to fit in your auras. If you get a lower one, like a 10 or 11%, then you'll have to replace these small nodes on your tree for mana reservation um, efficiency nodes right here. Yeah, so if you have a 10%, you'll need two of these. If you have 11%, you'll need one of these. These are roughly 90 chaos each, I believe. So yeah, try to get a 12% Dragon Fang. Higher is better, of course, if you can. Venters, aim for at least 9% Quant. 
uh, 30 life and 20% rarity, and then enough res to get you capped. So you don't need 10% quant. 9% quant is completely fine. Just focus on the life and res to get you capped in the rarity. And the most important um, res here is the light and res followed by cold and then fire is last. Fire is the least important res. You really don't need that much fire res. Those gold worms give you so much. And there's also no alters from eater that lower your fire res, but they do lower cold and lightning. So yeah. As long as you just capped fire res without division to still it, I say you're fine. So yeah, you don't need that much fire res. Yeah, aim for like 9% quant, I would say. 9% quant makes these way, way cheaper. So for the belt, you can use a Biscos or Stygian Vise. Um, Stygian is really good because you get flash effect and you get a lot more life and you get a jewel socket. And with this jewel socket, you can just get a regular max life corrupted blood. Cannot be afflicted on you, jewel, and that's it. This is how you solve corrupted blood. Um, if you do use a Biscos, which is also very strong, you know, I do recommend, you can try out both and see which one you like more. Then you'll need a corrupted blood jewel on one of these instead. Like instead of this jewel, just use a corrupted blood jewel. Having corrupted blood immunity is very important. Um, but yeah, that's about it for the belt. The rare belt is also useful if you do need res. So if you get like low light and res on your venters, then you can make up for that by having a stygian vise. So yeah, you can get your belt slot last as it can be kind of your flex slot. If you need res, go with the side vise. If you don't need res, you can go with Bisco's Leash, stuff like that. And then, yeah, for the flasks, I've noticed with some people, make sure you have the correct uh, prefixes and suffixes on your flask. So, you know, you want evasion, you want uh, rarity, you want reduced effective curses, and you want reduced mana cost of skills. Very important, this reduced mana cost of skills is like 25%, by the way. And this reduce effective curses on you is not needed. You can replace this with moving speed, but I personally prefer reduce effective curses on you until you get head enter. When you get head enter, you can replace it with moving speed. But yeah, um, I would say you reduce effective curses on you, but you can also sort your maps out to where you do your curse maps and non curse maps, and you have two different flasks. So you can put on your curse flask when you're doing curse maps, when you're moving speed flask when there's no curse in your maps, right? Uh, jewels, so jewels, you can get a wide variety of roles. Just make sure you get percent max life and then a combination of chaos multi, dot multi, projectile damage, area damage, chaos damage, or increased damage. And surprisingly enough, stuff like projectile damage, area damage, and chaos damage is pretty much equal to like dot multi. A chaos dot multi is a little bit higher than these, but it, truthfully, it doesn't matter. You can get area damage, project damage, and max life. Just get whatever you can afford. At the very high end, the highest damage is like max life, chaos multi, then like chaos damage, I believe. But yeah, it, it really doesn't matter. Just get, you know, two of these uh, five and then just get max life. Uh, elegant hubris. So the only thing about the elegant hubris, you just need one rarity node and you need it on mind drinker. So don't worry about this number right here. Just... Use a Timeless Jewel Calculator. I'll link one down below in the description. If you don't know how to use it, um, I'm sure there's like a video out there, but it's really, really simple to use. But yeah, use a Timeless Jewel Calculator. You just want one rarity node on Mind Drinker right here, and that's it. It also has to be Kaspiro, so you can use Supreme. And to go over why we use Supreme, it's because of tattoos. So as you see, we're fully tatted up. Um, for all of our dex tattoos, you want to use movement speed. Every single dexterity tattooed wants to be movement speed. Every single intelligence and strength tattoo, I mean, note, we want to have rarity or max life or mana reservation. It depends what you need. If you feel a little bit squishy, you can use max life here. As you can see, we have about maybe like eight or so. So 16% max life is pretty good. And yeah, mana reservation here is also pretty good if you need it. Um, now I'll go over the skills real quick. So yeah, for Caustic Arrow, um, I'll put this here too. If you get the five green, one red, this is the setup you want to use. If you get four green, two red, then you can use Cruelty and replace Swift Affliction. As you can see, it is about 10% DPS loss, but if you have to, if you have to settle with it, then you know, it's fine. 
So yeah, ideally five green one red. Now uh, aura setup. This is in your weapon. Uh, this can be anything. This doesn't have to be um six blue. By the way, I've had a couple of questions about that. Your world hell has to be five blue, one green. But the six socket can be anything. Um, it can be red, green, or blue. I put that in the notes. If it's red, put steel skin in your bow. If it's green, put in wither and step. And if it's blue, put in frost blink. So yeah, it does not have to be uh, five blue, one green. It just needs to be four blue, one green. Frost blink, and this is our frenzy setup. That's how you generate frenzies. You also get a little bit of life gain on hit. Pretty nice. Um, eventually, you want to get a anomalous a GMP to make this free, but you don't need that to start. It's just a little bit more expensive. Divine Bless and Haste setup. So I've had a couple questions about this. To make haste free, you need Divergent Inspiration, Anomalous incre uh, Increase Duration, and you need your 25% reduced mana cost on your flask. If you're missing one of these, it won't be free. But as you can see, if you don't use incre Increase Duration, it's only 23 mana, so it's still castable. It's just you're just going to be losing a uh, duration on it, so you have to press a little bit more often. That is an option. But yeah, this is what you need to make haste free. As you see, it costs zero mana when we have everything. This is your level three enlighten setup. So the budget version also uses level three enlighten. And when you hit level four, I do recommend it. Level four allows you to run Dread Banner. But yeah, level three, you use Enhanced, Wither and Step, Steel Skin. Level four enlighten setup, you get Dread Banner, Awaken Generosity, Steel Skin, and Wither and Step. So you just drop Enhance. Uh, Dread Banner is a really big uh, defense increase. Combined with Awakened Generosity, which is how Dread Banner works. Um, you don't care for the effect on you, you just care for the effect on enemies. So Awakened Generosity doesn't make it affect you, but you don't care for that. It does make it uh, have a 40% increase or effect um, on the enemies. So the enemies have way less accuracy and they also deal uh, like 3% less damage or something. It's pretty significant. Um, I can enable it here. So you see our evasion is 77% and we go to 84%. At 7% is pretty huge. That's like 25% less attacks taken because you went from 77 to 84. So yeah, it's it's a pretty big uh, defense increase. Um, do get level 4 and light it when you can. And then yeah, for upgrade priority, the first upgrade you should get is the Forbidden Jewels, which are these. Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh, Quartz Fusion, and Progenesis. So Progenesis is a massive side ability increase. Uh, completely massive. Um, I'll just show it right here. So yeah, as you can see, when you put on Progenesis, your EHP goes way up, way up. So yeah, do try to get Progenesis, uh, Progenesis when you can. It is like a 20 to 25 Divine Flask. I think the Fitted and Jewels are roughly 50 Divines for both. Maybe they'll go up, maybe they'll go down. I don't really know. Yeah, this is your first upgrade, not damage. You really want this off ability. It makes the build feel way more smoother. Then after that, you can kind of get whatever you want. Uh, just remember, you can't get rid of your Dragon Fangs for a Quant Amulet until you get a better Mana, Res Mana Reservation Helmet. And then you probably need Mana Reservation Jewels or Mana Reservation on your passives, like I said before. So yeah. If you want to do Quant Amulet, you'll probably need some Mana Reservation on your tattoos. And you're going to need a better Mana Reservation Helmet, uh, something like mine, where mine gives 20%. Uh, budget POB only gives 15%, as you can see right here. So yeah, we do want to switch to Quant Amulet. Um, make sure you also have a plus three or plus four greets. Now, this is expensive. Obviously, it has gone up. It's like, I don't know, I've heard anywhere from like 80 to 100 Divines. So just keep that in mind. You don't need this though. You can magically find this budget version like forever, but yeah. Um, you can't. Just don't get rid of your Dragon Fangs until you fix the mana reservation and until you get plus three or plus four greets. Um, there's also a Watcher's Eye for Dot Molding Onslaught. I think this is around 15 Divines. This is still pretty cheap, at least for now. This is very good. Uh, whether you should get Dot Multi on Onslaught on your Watcher's Eye. So I have Dot Multi here, but I do think Onslaught is just as good, maybe even better. 20% dot multi, as you can see, is a bit of damage. So we go from 1250 to 1180. So yeah, um, I do think onslaught on kill is just as good here. There's also other watchers eyes you can get. 
You can get like onslaught on kill. You can get chance to evade while grace is affected by you. There's other options, right? You don't need to go with, with exactly what I have here. But yeah. Then of course, you know, like I said, the level four enlightenment. Level four enlightenment should be your second upgrade, or maybe your first with forbidden jewels and progenesis. Kind of depends. It is the cheapest upgrade here. But yeah. So that's about it for this video. Like I said, if you have any more questions, um, feel free to stop by my Twitch. I do stream daily. I'll answer your questions as soon as I can, or you can leave a comment below. Um, I tried to make this build as budget as I can, and hopefully I answered all your questions. So yeah.